Hey guys, and welcome to Armored Brigade with me, Time and Tactics. We're testing out the newest DLC, what they call Nation Pack, here for Armored Brigade. And it's the Czechoslovakia-Netherlands Nation Pack. We get uh, new countries, and we get a new map, but we also get what they call a, a linear campaign. If you watched my previous videos, you know I used the dynamic campaign to create a campaign based on a map, kind of a random campaign. In this case, they have actually designed a campaign that you follow through with through a variety of scenarios. Now, this one is called Breaking the Chains, and it deals with what's known as the Prague Spring of 1968. That's when the Warsaw Pact had fit, well, they were fed up with Czechoslovakia and invaded and tried to quell that Prague Spring uprising. Okay, so what do we have to do? Well, I'm going to set it for default values over here. Nothing really special here. You can give yourself a little bit of a boost or the opponent, but I think that's fine. Oh, one thing I want to show you here, uh, the round length, we can use this game. This game can be played either turn-based, if you like, or it can be an RTS. I'm going to play as the... Am I going to play as turn... Well, I guess I'm going to go for the RTS, but you could play turn-based. Basically, what you do is... You give orders, and then it plays out for a predetermined period of time, let's say 30 seconds, and then you get to give orders again. If you play RTS, you can continually give orders throughout, and that's what I'm going to do here. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to say about that. Let's go to the next screen. Okay, so here we are in the game. Here's our briefing. The First Blood, Czechoslovakia versus USSR, August 21st, 1968, Wednesday. It was Tuesday, August 20th, a balmy evening of late summer. Captain Emil Van Vancek, is it Vancek, was at his home, listening to the television late into the night. At the end of the program, the announcer wished everyone a good and peaceful night, and as usual, the Czechoslovak national anthem was played. At 1.30 in the morning... The doorbell woke him up. A breathless motorcycle courier notified him to return to the barracks immediately. When asked what was happening, the soldier replied that he did not know, but he was ordered to summon all professional soldiers. This calmed Emil slightly, lessening his initial distressing thoughts. It was a practice of superior officers to perform call-ups to the units when it was discovered that a soldier failed to report for duty or similar. Upon arrival at the barracks, he asked the same question to the battalion staff officer. You heard nothing? The invasion, the stab in the back. Our communist comrades attacked us, the officer replied with visible agitation. He catched the gloomy gaze, he caught the gloomy gaze of the lieutenant Stefan Havlik, commander of the battalion's mortar company, and it was clear things were bad. Captain the captain heard to order his second in command to alert the company issue weapons, ammunition, and prepare to leave the barracks. After the arrival of the platoon commanders, he went to the battalion staff, where all the main officers gathered except the commander of the 57th Motor Rifle Regiment, who went on holiday to Yugoslavia a few days earlier. Cigarette smoke dimmed the staff room, and there was an unimaginable noise. Everyone spoke angrily over each other. The radio was constantly broadcasting, but orders for further activities were not forthcoming until just after 3 a.m. There were Soviet troops in the vicinity since July, remaining still after the Warsaw Pact exercises Sumava and overcast summer 68. The 57th Motor Rifle Regiment was to stand fast and secure the immediate area and communication lines around Stribro, but not to engage or provoke Soviet troops if encountered. Captain Emil Vancek was hence ordered to watch the western approaches to the town. Around 5 a.m., an unidentified armored car, marked by a wide white band across the hole, drove down the road right into the Czechoslovak positions. We might never know if it was a nervous trigger or a genuine intent to push back the Soviet occupiers, but one of the machine gun positions opened fire on the incoming vehicle. Tracer fire from the whole company erupted across the dark covered fields. Soon after, bright lights that left a trail of smoke behind them could be seen over the forest edge. These were parachute flares that were fired from mortars situated near the entrance to the barracks. The incoming Soviet column has now been certain that they have encountered an unmistakably hostile force. Okay, so 
that's the briefing. Let's take a look at the map. And if you played before, you're uh, probably familiar with how this works. If I zoom out, you can see the actual map as it is in Czechoslovakia. Well, I guess this would be the Czech Republic now, but that's what it is here. And they just uh, created a, the scenario on top of this here. So anything inside this rectangle here, the red and green, is where the battle will take place. We can start with our units in the green here. Our recon units can start all the way over here, actually, in this section as well. And the same thing goes for the Soviets. Let's look at our order of battle, first of all, and see what we have to play with here. So, on the left, we can see our formations. We have a, a couple of them here. At a quick glance, it looks like we have a pretty good selection here. And we even have a tank platoon. Let's go through it real quick. So we have a uh, scout section here. It looks like it's a uh, motorized recon here. And they're down here. We can zoom in and we can actually see the units right there. There's one. That's the OT-65A recon unit, and it looks like that. We can look at the information for it as well. And there's a lot of data to take in, but we don't have to look at all of that just yet. Let's go back into the order of battle. So then we have the actual scout teams dismounted from the actual vehicle, the recon vehicle. One of them is hiding, and the other one is ready. Okay, so we have, we have those four basically there. We have an infantry HQ unit, a command team. They're good to keep close to your actually, uh, actual platoons. And we have two platoons here, each having three squads under their command. So that's the two here. We also have a T-34, 85 tank platoon here. These are medium tanks. I wonder how they're going to stand up against the, the Soviets, though. Hmm. I don't know. They have, obviously, different weapons. 85mm gun here and a 7.62mm coax machine gun. They can use high-explosive frag with the 85mm, armor-piercing high-explosive, and so forth. And then here are the, uh, the ammunition for the coax. But we'll look, as I said, we'll take a look at that a little bit later. So we have three of those tanks, basically, ready to go. I think that's all we have as far as direct armor. Anti-tank here, we have two tank destroyers. Now, tank destroyers are quite good. They are extremely powerful. Their one disadvantage, or the one negative thing about them, well, let's first here. We can see we have a 82mm uh, recoilless weapon. That's all they have, but they're pretty powerful. Uh, the penetration here is pretty high, 250, basically the damage here, and pretty accurate, all the way up to 800 meters even. So that is very interesting. So it's a chemical energy it's using, so it's not based on the speed of the actual projectile. Okay, now the negative, the negative is that their armor is very weak. They are very weak. So they could very well be taken out easily. If we go back into and look at our main, not main battle tank, but our medium tanks here, down here, we can see here on their armor, 10 times better, right? So they are overall more versatile, I would say. You have to be a little bit careful about your about your uh, tank destroyers. But they are extremely powerful. As you can see here, they had 250 in penetration. The best we can do here, and that's a kinetic energy, so it kind of diminishes with distance. It's, what, 167, 150 maybe? No, 180 here with this one. So anyway... That's those, but I'm, I'm, I do like having that uh, tank destroyer, two of them available. We have a 100mm anti-tank gun. These here, as you can see in the picture there. And they are also very good. Obviously, armor is going to be non-existent, completely not there. So if a tank shows up, you better take it out quick, because if that gets a hit on these guys, they're done for. But they do a lot of damage. Here, 220, 300 in this one, chemical. So that's pretty good. That was down here, right? And we had two of them as well. We have heavy recoilers section. So we have a lot of anti-tank here. Because I, I believe the 82 millimeter is also anti-tank. You can see here the weapon. Looks like we have a couple of these uh, infantry units there manning it. So we're going to get a couple of assault rifles. And the main gun here... 
is going to be pretty good, I think. Well, high explosive fragmentation is not meant for armored units. As you can see, it's meant for soft targets. It will do a lot of damage there, though. And then high explosive, 250. Also very good. The range, let me just see how that goes. It's nighttime. It's 449 in the morning. Hmm. Well, we have to see. Going down the list, we also have two sections here of light recoilers. The Terrasness 21 is what this is. It's only two men there supporting that, it looks like. Yep, two assault rifles. And then they have the 82mm uh, itself. Again, 250 is not bad, though. Now, this tells me we're going to be fighting armored units of some kind, I would think. If not directly armor, although I'm sure we are, uh, maybe APCs, something like that. Let's go back in. So we have two of them there. Then we have three mortars here. So we can do direct, indirect fire. And they have the possibility of also using illumination. So we can fire these flares, basically, that can illuminate uh, in front of our units, maybe. So if anybody comes up close, we sh uh, use the mortar to illuminate. And then we can fire our weapons maybe a little bit further than we could otherwise. We also have a uh, high explosive here. Target soft. So if we have any infantry units attacking us, we can also use it for that. Now that would be three of them here. And then we have, it looks like light machine gun and medium machine gun sections here. Two of them here. And as you can imagine what they can do, they have probably pretty good range on the light machine gun itself. We have 1,050 bullets here, it looks like. And the range goes up to, well, 600 meters here. A little bit of penetration, but... Mainly, well, I guess you can you can use them against air, but soft, I guess, is where they're uh, best. And they also have one guy with an assault rifle and the hand grenade. Now, that's the light machine gun. We also have a medium machine gun. Let's look at that one. Over here, we have three of them there. I guess we have one who is firing and one is loading. Yep, he must, you know, make sure the 762s are fed into the machine gun appropriately. Uh, 1,500 bullets there. And the range is 1,100 meters. That is quite a bit better. If you compare that to the assault rifle, 400. But it kind of tapers off at, you know, once you get to 200, it's, it's, you know, I don't know if you want to use it too much. Uh, here, if you get to six, 500 maybe. Yeah, so it is, it's quite a bit better. But again, it's not against, you know, armored units. And that's really all we have. Let's look and see. I don't think we have any artillery. Nope, we don't. If we did, we could uh, look at them here. We can set up certain areas uh, where we can have artillery support off map. Artillery support. And then air support, we don't have anything there either. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens here if we get in trouble not having any of that. Although I'm not surprised, right? We're purely defending here. Now, we do get our units set up already when the when the game starts. Uh, let me just take it in for a second here. It looks like, this is, by the way, all NATO symbols. You can, um, you can change those, I think. But let's go with the NATO symbols here. So that's a recon unit here. And that tank there, it looks like. These are light machine gun. You can just hover over them as well. And you can see that infantry over there. Mortar back here. And that tank, we have some armored units here. Yep. So here's the deal. If you see, you can see that we have two green boxes here. What's called the Checkpoint West and Barracks. We have to hold the objective locations. We have to hold them. How long, do you ask? Well, until the Russian red bar, which we can't see actually, is down to zero without our green bar going down to zero. And you lose, as you can imagine, the bar when you lose units and when they take locations. Things like that. So I don't know how this is going to go. If we don't make it, we're not going to proceed on the campaign, and that, that would be it, right? So um, we'll see how it goes. We can hold down the middle mouse button and drag the map. Uh, let's take a look here, first of all. If you just hover over on a location, you can see here we have a building, for instance, over here. Infantry traffic ability 50, so it's possible to go inside for infantry. Vehicles cannot. Makes sense. Concealment is 80. So you're inside the building, you're concealed pretty heavily. And that's very good. Compare that to the forest over here. 60. I prefer to be in here. 
cover is 70. That means we get protection. And here's cover is uh, 60. Okay, and also we have elevation. We can look at the height map here. That will tell us a little bit about how things are at different elevation here. But instead of doing that, we can also press L for line of sight. So if I select this unit here, you can see here, we uh, at a glance, we can tell how far they can see. They can see out to here. But as I drag out, I get like a representation of the terrain, you know, going from, in this case, right to left. So you see S29, spotter, that's where I am at right now. And then my target is over here. It goes down, and then at the very end, it kind of comes back up a little bit again. So, um, yeah, that's how that works. Now, it's at night, too, so I don't know about that. It's not great for seeing, and that's obviously why they're attacking at night here. They don't want to be seen as they come in. I think it's pretty common to attack, you know, early morning hours. Most people are asleep, probably, you know, right at 5 o'clock, maybe, 4 o'clock, I would think. So, we'll see. But we do have some units here. So, we have this unit, and that would be our OT-65A, which I think is a Hungarian unit, actually. But it's repurposed for the Czech Republic. Uh, anyway, so this one here, the 65A, the unit that it contains has been dismounted. You can see the yellow line here. They're over here. There are two of them, a scout team. They're sitting here. I guess that's fine. We can still fire with this weapon the main weapon it has. And what does it actually have? It is like a uh, anti-tank. Yeah, 10 of these high explosives. 600 in range. Got to keep that in mind. Okay, chemical energy. So we know it's going to be penetration. The same all the way. That is not bad. This one is very good. You can just think of this as uh, basically a anti-tank unit. We also have a 7.62 coax machine gun. Very popular. Uh, it has 250 bullets loaded and then the remainder there available as well. The signature is how visible is the flame when you fire. So 60 here per, uh, percent. If you look at the recoilless, 200. Once we fire this, they might know where we are and they might send in additional units. Now we're sitting up there. Is that a good spot? We have this unit here. If you look at the map, here and this might take a little bit to go through because we need to know how the map works before we can decide what to do right if you look at the stream here and let me hover over that it is impassable that means I think this stream all the way down here is going to be impassable they cannot get across this also yeah that's impassable but this one here I don't think is no it's not so they if they start over here if they did, if they went over here, they couldn't get across. So obviously they won't do that, I don't think. Nope, there's no way to get across here. So there's no point in them doing that. What are they going to do? Well, they could come across this bridge here. Now this bridge, I mean, I can start with my units here. As you can, you know, I can put them right here if I wanted to, every single unit, and just point them down here. It's a little bit risky, right? Because we're trying to defend up here instead. Now, going up the river here, we can see there's another bridge over there. And then, I thought I saw, yeah, there's a bigger one there. Hmm, a bridge. Hmm, I don't think we can destroy them, but that is actually just outside where we can deploy our recon units. Remember, this area right in here, we can use that area for our recon units if we wanted to. But um, I don't know. Remember, we're defending. If you're defending, we're going to have fewer units. These are the Russians coming in as well. They're not going to come in with just a few units, right? So I think we're going to face off with a lot of them. And I don't want to lose my, well, basically anti-tank units here. Down here at the edge of the forest, looks like we have a recoilless gun there. There's a light machine gun team here. Another recoilless here. So this one is sitting here. And by the way, you can tell these belong together. If you click the NATO symbol, they light up in green. You can give it commands as a group. Or you can select one individually and give command as well. Now, um, if you give command as a group, they tend to react faster. They're kind of built in the system where to simulate the, the difficulty of giving command like this, there's a delay between when you give the command and they actually respond. 
So that's something to keep in mind. The machine guns over here, I don't know. Here's what I'm thinking. You have the bridge here. If they start over here, I am guessing they would come across this bridge. They could probably go up here. Wait a minute. Yeah, you could pass this one here, but it's going to be extremely slow going to get up here through the forest. My take is they're going to come here. Maybe also here. Maybe here on the road. It's much faster to travel on road if they're going to have bring uh, mobile units. And I imagine they would. If you just use an infantry unit, it's going to take forever to get across here. So they're going to be mobile, I'm sure of it. Okay, with that in mind, what do we actually do? I think I want to move them somewhere else. Remember, we have all this area to set them up in, but I don't want to be too far forward and take a, a chance here. So I'm thinking about just using them as maybe a more anti-tank. And you know, I can drag them, by the way. Oh, yeah, this is what how it, what they want you to do. Uh, let me just go ahead and give an order to reattach. Uh, what you can do is you can either just select this one and then drag it. But they say don't do that because you can get into a problem with the, with the game not being able to map around obstacles. Instead, what you want to do is you want to select your unit, hit spacebar, and you get an align and click where you want to go. And then it can put it down in a better spot for you. I'm going to click there. And you can see here now we are putting all of our units because I selected the native symbol. Uh, but I don't think I want this one here. That is just a scout team. Now, if we let them sit quiet, the scout team, nothing's going to happen. So maybe, I mean, they're not going to get detected. Maybe I will put one here and one there. And then what I'll do, I'll tell them standard, standard operating procedure should be the important thing is to hold your fire. Let's do that. See cover, pathfinding, quick. Yeah, that's fine. That's that one. I could have told, I could probably have picked both of them at the same time. But let's pick this one and try that. Hold your fire. Why hold your fire? Because they're going to be basically invisible here. If they just stay put here, they can get an eye on the enemy a lot sooner than we could otherwise. And the red line here means we are too far away. Well, hmm. And I really don't know. I just pretend I know how to play the game. But uh, I know something about it anyway. Uh, if we put... That's yellow, so we're in a good range, I guess. If I put this one here, you know, and they come around the corner here, I'm just guessing, then we could maybe open fire here with our... with our anti-tank, the Terrasnis... Terrasnis 21, 82mm... 82mm recoilless gun here. Yeah, let's do that. And then the other one... I don't want them too far away, but let's put the other one there. If I select, if I hold down shift and left click, I think I can give them orders. Yeah, those two units together, but not the whole formation. We'll tell them to effective, effective. So that means they're not going to open fire on max range, which is good. I don't want them to be uh, doing that. Use main armament. Yep, let's do that. Okay, that's good. Let's click away. And I don't know if that's reflected here until later. That's my scout team. That's not what I wanted. Yep, they showed us up. The effective range. Good. So they're sitting there. All right, good. Uh, that's going to be good. I sure hope I get to uh, start the game here before my uh, time is up. But um, let's just see. I want to get a good spot, right? We want to make sure we can do a good job here. We have two recoilless guns here. Now, they have pretty good range, don't they? Yes, they do. And I'm thinking I'm thinking like this. Over like two-thirds accuracy is good enough for me. And that would mean around, uh, what, seven, eight hundred meters or so? How far is seven hundred, eight hundred meters? Well, we can select them and then just move the mouse. So that's going to be over here. Now... We have no line of sight. It's nighttime. We have to go all the way to here to get any kind of line of sight. So it's going to be important to do something with our mortars to light up this field, I'm thinking. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. I could put one here if I wanted to. It is probably heavier terrain. No, probably not the same trace deciduous. Concealment 40, cover 45. And then here, what do we have? 
cover 60. Mixed forest. That's better. One thing I forgot to mention was the relief value here. You can see it's 25 in the mixed forest. It's only, I think it's only, no, it's 25 here as well. But uh, open terrain, it's 20 here, dirt road. That relief value it means that that's the chance of them, uh, whatever unit you have in that location, them being able to enter a position where they are stronger at defending or kind of position themselves more effectively. So it's good to have a high number there. I think I'll take it. We'll put it here. And if you look carefully, I can actually turn on the... Let me see here. Let me turn on the squares. And if you're not quite sure what key command that is, you can press up here. And I just noticed it's G. So we can get out of here and press G. And we can see the... Oh, I should be able to press... There it is. That's one square. Okay? So you are always in a square, so to speak. Okay, so we can have that on if you want to. You don't see it if you zoom out. Now that takes care of that unit there. And um, hmm, I think probably, so I'm, I'm worried now here, what's gonna happen here? But let's say we are actually located, we'll put ourselves, oh, we'll stay here. Now I'm gonna select the unit here actually and say order reattach. And that way, if I want to give them order as a group, remember that's faster. That's our heavy. That's our heavy end, I think. Okay, yeah, anyway, if I want to give order as a group, it's much faster to do it that way. Here's my one of my light machine guns. Okay. And I'm further north. I mean, they're going to come here. I'm sure they are. The way we were set up here, it looks like we've kind of created a half circle here or with anti tank and some machine guns, uh, you know, split up our infantry units. It's, I mean, I think it's pretty good overall. Maybe not the best location here, light machine gun, although, wait a minute, not terrible, because I'm thinking they'll come down here with their armored units. And we don't want to have our machine guns open fire on them. We want to do that with our anti-tank. Uh, here's one, that's a light, light one as well. Yeah, maybe leave it here. Actually, I think I'll move it up there. Give them orders to reattach. Yeah, leave them there, because I think they have a, more of a chance to view. Let's see here. Yep, that's better, I think, right? This way. There. Okay, so there we have them there. What is the view here? Ooh. That's not very good, is it? That's more, though, if they come this way down the road, we're going to have to have something here, I would think. And then the light machine gun. Now, we're defending over... Over... Where are we defending at? Uh, let me deselect that. There. We're defending this and this. The west, what was it called again? The checkpoint west and the barracks. That's what I really want to do. I don't want anybody to come up too close. Maybe I can put them here. And one unit... This doesn't seem terribly useful. I'll put one unit... What terrain is this? That's open. Is that open terrain? Let's see. They're open. Yeah, they're on a dirt road. Let's not do that. We'll put them here. Put the two of them there. Reattach and reattach. There. But you know what? Let's give them orders to SOP. You're going to hold your fire to effective range. Hard target, hold your fire. Don't use a light machine gun against a hard target. I don't think that's going to be very useful. I think that will take care of it. I'm just double checking it. Yep, that worked. And what about our anti-tank, the light version here? SOP, max range? No. Let's say, hmm, we're not going to fire on soft targets, and we're going to fire on effective range for hard targets. Okay, that takes care of that. I think that, I mean, I think that's pretty good. Here, I think, don't we have a medium machine gun? We do have a medium machine gun here. They're sitting back here, which I think works out pretty well. If there is a armored unit coming down here, we are kind of protected, but if an infantry unit makes it down here, when we open fire at, well, close range, we're going to take them out, I would think. It wouldn't be uh, 
much of a problem there, hopefully. So SOP for you would be to soft target effective, hold for hard targets. And we'll see what we'll do about how that goes. And here we have our 100 millimeter anti-gun, look at that, anti-tank gun. That is pretty good, 2,000 meters on penetration on soft targets. Really, on soft targets. Very high, yeah, with fragmentation. Hmm, so it's like a high explosive that then basically disperses into a thousand pieces, and you can imagine what happens there. I think that's what that is. And we have two other ones there. 300 penetration is great, and we do have one unit. This unit here is in a good spot. Look at that road. This unit? Not as good, I don't think. Hmm, I wonder if I need to put him up here. Let me just fix my mouse real quick. There. Um, I changed the sensitivity accidentally. Now, if I move it up here instead, I can reach here. What else do we have? Didn't we have some anti or some tank destroyers? We do have two of them over there. Yeah, see, I don't know how far they're going to go. If they come this way, although I wouldn't think they would come this way. I would think they would come here, but maybe, maybe they would. Sitting here would, you know, let's say they come down the road, they take out this one, they get to this point, we take them out there. But we can't reach there very much. We can still see, yeah, okay. Maybe that is a good spot. What about here? No, that's a better spot. I think I'll take it here. There, and since I selected the NATO symbol, you move the whole formation, but I want to move them back there. We attach. Okay. Now, what are you going to do here? We're going to give them orders to. Hmm. They could fire on soft targets, but we have other units for that. Let's do hard target and then uh, effective range and then soft target hold. Okay, good. What else do we have? We looked at the machine gun. That's good. And then we have our tank destroyers. I really don't know where to put the... Is that a tank destroyer? Yeah, that is. I don't know where to put them. Remember, they have no real armor to speak of, but they're big, fat guns. It's like you don't want them in the open. You want them, like, if they come around the corner, you know, a tank, then you take them out there. Maybe something here? What is the line of sight here? Press L. We can only reach there. Hmm. I'm not liking this here. It's like too open. Yeah, it's open the wrong way, right? Let's look at that again. We have two of them. They're up there. I don't. I don't think I want them here. I mean, I could put them in the forest. Uh, if I let's say I put them here, what is that uh, line of sight? That's not good. Not good in the forest. Hmm. Now, this would be a good spot to range here. You get a good, pretty good view there. And then, if they come from this direction... But, hey, are they really going to come from there? Let's see. There. Maybe here. Although, that means they're going to be in the forest. And I'm sure there, they're going to be quite visible. If you look at the informational screen, the signature is 320. Yeah, I mean, you don't get too many chances with these, with these guys. You got to take your chance when you get it. What if we move them down here? There. We'll put them here instead. And then the other one. It's in the forest there now. <clears throat> yeah, that's a bad spot, I think. I don't, I don't like that spot at all. Having both of them here, maybe... Let me look across the road, but not too much in here. What about here? No, it's not very good. I like this one, though. Actually, we'll put it here. Yep, then we can also look down there, maybe. Yep, that's good. I, I like that. We'll take that. So they're in charge here. We're going to put both of them... Shift, left click, we're going to give them orders to reattach there. And what are your actual orders? Um, well, we're going to say hold your fire against soft targets. Let's not expose ourselves until something happens there. And then we have our three tanks, three armored units here in our 
T-34 tank platoon. Um, I wish I, I want to keep them alive, right? But they're only mediums. I'm, I'm thinking the Russians are going to bring in more. Although they're good. If you can keep the front facing the enemy, you can see the um, armor is better. And our weapon is good. Pretty solid here. Two coax or one coax there. So, yeah, two machine guns there. Hmm. We could keep them here as a mobile force, ready to go if we need to. I think they can probably reach here. Can't they see? They can see a little bit there, yeah. Just a little bit. They're probably on the right side here of this so that they're a little bit protected and we can use them when we need to. Now, going down south, what else do we have here? Anti-tank. Here's another light uh, recoilless anti-tank gun. I could move them up here. Maybe that's where I want to go. Got to be careful, though, because here, as you can see, the terrain is not as good. Cover 40. I don't think it's as good as the mix, right? No, it is 40 there, too. Okay. I say we leave one there and then one here. What is the line of sight? L and then click. Yeah. Pretty decent. Let's say they come down. Let's say they come here. And then this one going to come into action. And the same thing there. Okay, so that takes care of that. Uh, are they both? Nope, this one is not. It's red. You can see we need to give it order to reattach. And then we have infantry units here. A pl infantry platoon. Oh, I forgot to say, also, I think we have, yeah, that's us here. Emil is here in charge. If he dies, the game is over. He's sitting in the barracks, giving command right now. So he's in the further east. And if they get all the way to here, we're going to lose it anyway. So let's let's leave it here. Okay. Um, so I'm going to leave him there. We have one infantry over there, one over here. This is awfully exposed. I don't think I want to do that. Instead, let's move them down. Maybe something like that. This way, if somebody makes it all the way down here, we have three units, and I think our infantry, they do have RPGs here with a with a weapon that we can use to take out a few armored units, potentially. 260 there. Range is not great. Basically up to 150 meters, and that's not going to be much at all, but something like that. But still, it's pretty good here. If they come in here, they're going to have to deal with them. And what about here? Maybe we'll take this one, something like that. There, how about that? I do like that, okay. So we attach, we attach, and that takes care of that. We have Emil himself here, and then we have our um, Media mortars here. I think I want to move them back a little bit here. We don't want to have them right there in the open. Leave them here. The closer they are to the Supreme HQ here, the, the better it is, I think. Okay, that takes care of that. Now, this is not the end. If you are a savvy player of this game, you can give orders before before the game starts, and that's not going to introduce any kind of any kind of delay. So if you wanted to, you can tell your scout to, for instance, uh, travel over here and then travel over here and then you can add another waypoints that disabled and then when you want them to travel you enable it and then they can do it immediately they don't have to wait however I'm not that good at the game as you probably will see but uh, so I don't think I'm ready to set that up to that level of sophistication just yet but uh, I think it's looking pretty good have we covered everything I think we have okay so now, next thing to do would be to start the game. Oh, by the way, build. If you have minefields, anti-tank, wires, uh, things like that, we don't have any of that, so we can't do it. So, And there was no artillery and no air support. But yeah, next up would be to actually start the game. But I'm out of time. I'll come back, and we'll play more of Armored Brigade. Bye, guys.